Hi, my name is Dr. Jo Fitzsimons. I'm the Acting Head of the Professional Development Services at Whitefield Academy Trust. Today I'm here to talk to you about my doctoral thesis that I completed recently and it was about why smell is important for people with profound and multiple learning disabilities. Why did I focus on smell? Well, I felt smell was a under-researched, underdeveloped and undervalued sense. And this was because when I looked into literature, most especially in special education, there were only a few books that I could find that had any reference to smell. Underdeveloped, there wasn't many theory. It seemed to be a lot of reflections and observations, but there was very minimal in terms of underpinning knowledge. And undervalued, when I talked to colleagues Outside my school, across the country, it seemed to be that smell was an add-on. It didn't seem to be the, an innate or the, the first kind of sensory experience that people would refer to when they were trying to um, create learning activities for their pupils. So a few interesting insights that I did find. First of all, the accuracy with which we can recall a specific scent is suggested to, as being 65% accurate after a year, in contrast to our ability to recall a visual stimulus, which has been recorded at just 50% after four months. So within literature, it was suggesting that smell had a better capacity or gave you a better capacity to remember things even more so than you've been able to look at something and remember something. Also, I found some evidence to say that the sense of smell had been recognised as evoking stronger emotional responses than the senses of sight, sound or touch. So that meant that if you smelt something, it was more likely that if you had an emotional response or an emotional attachment to that smell, that you would also potentially remember it longer and it may have a, a stronger sort of impact on you. Say, for example, when I was really, really young, I was asked to eat some melon, but at that time I was really, really full and I remember feeling really, really ill afterwards. And to this day, I can't eat melon. There you go. I'm sure you all have your own experiences where maybe you smelt something and you had a positive or a negative experience and you remember that to this day. So what we did find out was that um, you actually smell through your mouth. So traditionally I had thought that we just smelled through our noses but actually we also smell through our mouth as well and this is called retronasal olfaction and this is something really really important to remember especially when you're working with your pupils you don't necessarily just look out for a smelling through the nose or a sniff you're also looking for any kind of smelling through the mouth which is the pupils maybe opening their mouths protruding their tongues really really important so my findings first of all as I've just said what happened was when we observed our pupils, and this is a study we did with seven pupils of the period of eight weeks of intensive observation with parents, with teachers, with support staff, and with other professionals, our music therapists in particular, we find that the majority of pupils seem to be smelling through their mouth. Because when we offered them a smell, they opened their mouths, they protruded their tongues. Very few, only 26% of the pupils actually seem to sniff or seem to be inhaling through their noses. So this was a really, really important finding because it meant that when we were presenting smells in future, we were thinking we must look out for any kind of mouth or tongue movement. Positioning of smells. The other thing that um, came across was that it was really, really important where we positioned our smells to make sure it was initially not too close or not too far away. And the ideal way of presenting a smell we find was to hold it at a distance and bring it closer until the pupil was comfortable and they detected the smell. 
smell thresholds. Now, in my literature search, I did find a reference and it was in a wonderful book called um, The Multisensory Handbook by Paul Pagliano. And in it, he referred to some sensory thresholds. And what happened is I looked at those and reflected on those in terms of some of the things that we were seeing with our pupils. And we did find there was a lot of commonality. But there's another element to that called the terminal threshold with which I lad. So what we find is that when we were presenting smells to pupils from a distance, at a certain point when we were drawing the smell closer, we found that the pupils were detecting the smell. And that was maybe through a change of eye movement. It might have been through a hand movement. It could have been even through them obviously opening their mouths. But then when we brought the smell closer, we find that pupils seem to be then more engaged with the smell. They may have started to laugh or they may have started to reach their hands out to touch and hold the smell. And what was felt by a number of staff and parents, and quite often it was the collective agreed perception of what the pupils were doing, was that there was a point at which they were potentially detecting the smell, but then a point at which they were recognising the smell. What I've added in here, and we mightn't just see because my face is in front of it, is that we also had to be mindful that if you hold a smell much too close to a pupil, it can overpower them, which means they haven't got that opportunity to smell something in a comfortable and at a reasonable distance so they can have the ability to process it and to recognise or detect the smell. Really important, it's not too close too soon, it can be overpowering. So containing smells, another really interesting thing we found out was that actually different pupils respond to different ways of containing smells in different ways. We found out that cotton wool, for those pupils who like to touch things with smells, so say we had some peppermint oil put on a cotton bud, some pupils really, really didn't like the touch of cotton wool. And that meant that when we offered them a smell with cotton wool in it, they rejected it. One particular pupil would always put her head down and she would push the piece of cotton wool away. But if we offered her smells in bright coloured packets or things that she could hold and touch and squeeze, she was much more engaged with the smell experience. And the staff and her parents also observe this. So what they were already saying at the end is that if we're offering a smell and it is contained in a cotton bud or a packet or in any other way, it should be in a way that allows the pupils to engage with that smell. Yeah. So a multi-sensory experience. The other thing we really, really find out is simply that the pupils, they wanted to taste and touch and, and to to, to hold it at, at, a, at a physical distance that was comfortable for them, the, the smell experiences that we were bringing to them. So it was really important that we just didn't, as an adult, present the smell, hold it, and for us to keep control of it and then to move it back. It's really important, if at all possible, that we can give a smell experience to a pupil and let them engage with it in their own way and in their own time. So supporting eating and drinking, another really interesting thing. What we found out is when we were observing staff, when they were supporting pupils to eat and to drink, and these were the pupils that weren't able to physically hold a spoon or a cup themselves, when the spoonful of food was brought closer to the pupil, they voluntarily opened their mouth and protruded their tongue to accept the food. So what we noted was it was really, really important to look out for those signs because it meant that when the people detected the smell of food, they themselves were ready to eat. And they were showing us that through opening their mouths and protruding their tongue. And what we decided to do was to share with everyone the idea is that when a pupil opens their mouth and protrudes their tongue in it during an eating experience, think to yourself, is this their cue? Is this their sign? I am ready to eat. I am ready to drink. Please bring my spoonful of food or my cup of food to me. Routines and smell memory. 
What we also found out was that over the research period, some of the smells that were less familiar to the pupils, by the end of the research period, it was obvious that for quite a number of them, they were really familiar and they recognized those smells. An example of this was that we were using vinegar in one of our sensory stories. At the beginning, two of our pupils showed, um, they kind of showed us that they didn't really um, know the smell and we thought they would um, um, but they didn't so they sort of smelled it briefly they moved away they maybe turned their head by the end of the research period they were when they smelt the vinegar they were grabbing it they were trying to drink it the perceptions of the parents the staff other professionals that were working with us they were also um, reassured that they felt with the smell being presented to a pupil regularly and this may be every day or maybe a couple of times a week that over an extensive period of time there was definitely a difference in the pupils responses and it was often felt that they recognized that smell so routines really really important and the last couple of things are first of all um it seems like common sense but if a people really really or if a person really really likes a smell allow them time allow them time to have that smell experience that smell and in a multi-sensory way where they can hold it where they can taste it where they can touch it and again unpleasant smells if they don't like a smell make sure that it's not within a space that they can't move it out of their way or they can't move away from that experience if you don't like it you don't have to be there with it so withdraw smell if a pupil so shines or even shows signs of displeasure or that they have enough of a smelling activity okay so really important is a couple of books that i find um through my journey trying to find research and smell first of all paul pagliano his book on the multi-sensory handbook and um, the th interesting thing about paul is that he didn't just address all of the senses he also was sort of one of the only books that showed any kind of a small little bit of theory about how the senses are made up how they work and how the sort of more kind of like maybe the neuroscience um of the, the, the sensory organs and so that was a really really useful book and something that people really should look out for flow longhorn obviously flow is a is a huge um uh, author and has been a huge influence in in my career and many other careers of my colleagues and um, her original book the sensory curriculum for very special people was really the first book that i found that had a discrete section about each of the senses and she had a discrete section about smell so a fascinating book and a wonderful um uh, thing to have um I just want to also note that Flo Longhorn has made her materials freely available. So just for anybody that's um, looking for some, one, some wonderful um, sensory resources, please look for Flo Longhorn. I think probably Joe is going to signpost everybody to that later in the presentations. And of course, um, Joanna Grace. Joanna was, um, her books were also some of the only books that made any reference to smell. But um, as Joanna always does so easily and so beautifully, and the thing probably that I'm struggling to do today is she can talk about the theory of sensory organs. She can talk about day to day life. She can integrate it all so well and so beautifully. And it's just a wonderful read. And again, like flow, it gives you a kind of an in-depth look and an insight into individual senses and how they impact on learning and how you can best use them to support your people with profound and learning difficulties. That is all from me. I hope there's been something here that's been of use to you and I hope you have a lovely um, rest of the presentations. Okay, bye.